two guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. Mm. Reckless speculation. It's a reckless speculation and scoop Thursday here on Mackie and Judd. We bring our friend in Darren Doogie Wolfson from the Five Eyewitness News Sports Department Scoop Podcast. Inside information about Minnesota sports teams. Gentlemen, happy reckless speculation Thursday in this calm before the storm, before NFL free agency week. Aaron Rodgers and the Jets are flirting right now. The Vikings made the move with Eric Kendricks. Are they flirting? Are they flirting or has it gone farther? Does somebody have at least one foot in the bed? That's all I... Have they reached second base, rounding third together? I don't think they're flirting here. Yeah, this is day two at least. (laughs) It sounds like it's going to happen at some point. Uh, so, Doogie, welcome to the show. We'd love to just sort of empty a, a, a Vikings bag of scoops and speculation here. So, Eric Kendricks, gone on Monday. And the rest of the week so far, we're kind of waiting for other shoes to drop. There's still $16 million over the cap. So, uh, what do you see out there? Well, good morning, gentlemen. Happy Reckless Speculation Thursday. Appreciate you guys accommodating me at this early hour on this Thursday morning. I'll be over at TCO Performance Center later to get some FaceTime with the Vikings Director of Health and Performance. So early afternoon, maybe late morning, you'll see some updates. A few of us will be over there. It won't just be me, but a few of us will be over there. We'll chase some updates on Lewis Seen, Andrew Booth Jr., Caleb Evans, some other guys rehabbing injuries. But yeah, Phil, you're right. I mean, they have until Wednesday afternoon to get under the cap. They still have approximately, as you said, $16 million to go. Now, the easiest move is still to come. The restructuring, not any sort of pay cut, but the restructuring of Brian O'Neill's contract. So that is one way that they will free up many millions of dollars. I still foresee that move happening. I don't necessarily foresee a release. Well, at least this morning, I suppose the time frame could change or it could be this afternoon compared to tomorrow. But I do anticipate a pretty busy Friday. I've been saying for a while, while, Phil, that I anticipate changes. That's plural. So more than Eric Kendricks, which we saw on Monday. So I still anticipate another, at least one sizable move to take place. Besides O'Neill. will be, yeah, in the ring. Yeah, that will be in the ring of honor. I mean, I've been saying for a while, Phil, you know this, that that I see Adam Thielen elsewhere next year. In fact, I'd love to see him with the Jets. I'd love to wow. see him with Whoa. Aaron Rodgers throwing Whoa. him the football. Whoa. Take the Eric Decker out, huh? Speculation. That's reckless speculation. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the teams <laughs> that will be in on Adam. I'd love to see him in Kansas City as well, right? I don't know if they bring back Juju Smith-Schuster. Nicole Hardman is a free agent. But, you know, if it worked out, I'd love to see Patrick Mahomes throwing the ball to Adam Thielen because I like him personally, right? But I just – wherever it is, Chiefs, Jets – you know, you name the franchise. I just I don't necessarily see Adam Thielen here in Minnesota next year. I can see Harrison Smith here that he is open minded. My understanding is to a pay cut. We're not talking a restructure there. He would have to take a cut, but that he's open minded to that. When you're a mid thirty safety, you have to be realistic about your lot in your NFL life. And there is mutual interest, the Vikings, in bringing him back. So I can see a scenario where Harrison Smith is back. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the end game right now is on Dalvin Cook, but I continue to hear that he's not interested in taking a pay cut. Already has his $2 million after the surgery, right? So if you're the Vikings, do you pay him the $2 million, then take whatever the dead money cap hit is and move on? Or do you bring him back for one more year? That is a situation that I'll be – you know, tracking as much as I can later today. But certainly can see a move on Thielen. Certainly can see Harrison Smith back. So, Dukes, on Thielen, at the end of the day, if this comes to pass, um, zero pun intended there, but that wow. was pretty good. Wow. If this happens... <laughs> I, was, I, I was total mistake. When it comes if, to Thielen, what's the catch? Yeah, what's the catch? Um, can you get your hands around... Uh, when it comes to him, is this going to be, do you think, more of a salary impasse where, where the Vikings tried to get the 
A uh, cap hit down, and he balked it potentially again to go back to what you said, Doogie Harrison Smith, a pay cut. Or is this really purely probably more about his role and the fact that he thinks he's got a lot more to give? And in the Vikings' defense, he might have more to give. But I will say, I think when it's putting somebody with Jefferson, I think it comes more down to speed. Like we know that Thielen can catch the ball, but I think they want a number two who can stretch the field. Adam can't. So which do you think is probably more of the problematic thing in the talks between Thielen's representatives and the Vikings? Well, more so the latter, a combination, right? Like if the Vikings could bring back Adam at a low number, get him to take a significant pay cut. Like, I think there would be some interest there, but my understanding is Adam, I mean, he sees the situation here. I mean, he's not going to get the snaps, the targets, all that, that he wants. And I think he sees a path to what he is desiring elsewhere. So more the latter, Judd, that, mm. that he feels like there's still a good amount of football there, that he played dinged up a good portion of the 22 season, that he'll be healthy heading into 23 now. You know, we can debate how much more he has to offer, mm -hmm. right? But he feels like, bottom line, he feels like he has a lot more to offer. That's why I can definitely see him playing elsewhere because he's not going to be given that opportunity to offer what he believes he can offer here in Minnesota. You know, the most, I think the most complicated one, well, I guess you could say that Cousins is probably the most complicated contract here, but when you put Cousins off to the side, Daniil Hunter is probably the most complicated one to figure out for like the third or fourth straight off season. Cause he, you know, he's, I think he's going to be fine being able to feed his family. Like he's made millions of dollars playing football, but he signed kind of a low ball contract out of his rookie deal. And you reported on that for a number of years. And then when it came time, so he was unhappy with that deal. And when it came down to like, he's in his prime, he had 50 sacks through age 25 now it's time to use my leverage to get a bigger deal. And boom, he misses almost two full seasons. So he comes back, plays all year. According to Pro Football Focus, he had, uh, I think, the seventh or eighth most pressures of any edge rusher in the league. The sack totals weren't quite there, but he was back to being a really good player. His base salary is $4.9 million in 2023. The top edge rushers in the NFL in terms of average annual value. So the TJ Watt, Joey Bosa, Miles Garrett, those guys are all making average annual value north of $25 million. He's not going to play for $4.9 million. But the Vikings might look and say, well, you're 20, it'd be 28. So we got to be a little careful about breaking the bank here. And we have a tough cap situation. So do you have any sense about the timing of when they could figure out what to do with Daniel Hunter. Do you have any sense about sort of what that may or may not look like contractually, Doogie? Well, certainly they had conversations already with his representation. I don't know how far along any sort of extension talks are. Heck, if they are even off the ground. I do know that Clacy Adolfo Mensa cherishes flexibility. So are you really willing to make Daniel Hunter one of the five highest paid edge rushers? I have a hard time believing the Vikings are willing to do that right now, that they would need to see more. Like if he wants to duplicate, you know, his 22 season in 23, maybe even take it to another level. Okay. Maybe we have these conversations after next year, you would have the franchise tag if need be, you know, the Vikings could find different ways to retain Daniil, but I guess I will be not overly surprised, but I would be mildly surprised if they pay him a crap ton of money hmm this off season. Now, if he's willing to come in at, you know, a slightly lesser number. Okay. You know, maybe there's a happy medium there that, that he cherishes security, but I guess I would be surprised if he ends up being one of the five highest paid players at his position. That being said, then Dukes, what's the word on Zadarius Smith, who obviously they can save quite a bit with if they cut or trade him. Um, and I, I would think that they would prioritize Daniil and his future over Zadarius's. But where do we think, uh, because Zadarius is, if you are just trying to get uh, to the cap, he is an obvious um, guy to either cut or trade. Yeah, well, I mean, I did hear his household, for whatever that's worth, you know, but he bought, he bought a goofy house for, you know, his lifestyle. So, you know, I told you that, that when the house hit the market in the you South Metro a few weeks ago, it was more about 
if he's here now, certainly the possibility exists he won't be here. But if he is here, he was looking for for a different house. It just didn't fit his needs. But the house has sold. I don't have a final end game, Judd. I know that they had conversations in Indianapolis. That's another one I'll continue to track. I certainly would not be shocked if if he is elsewhere, if they make a move there. But I just don't have, you know, a definitive, you know, feeling on that. Like, you know, I went all in or close to all in on, on where I stand on, on feeling. And Harry, I don't necessarily have a stance that I can go all in on on Zedaria. So mm. apologies. I will continue to track that situation. There's just so much. Like I was I curious on, you know, Greg Joseph. Well, his representation wasn't even in Indianapolis. You know, there just there hasn't been any talks on that. So, you know, are the Vikings going to bring back, you know, their kicker or what's the planet kicker? You know, Andrew DePaula, yeah. you know, the best long snapper in the game, right? There just there hasn't been much going on there. Right. You got all these things that they're trying to figure out, you know, interest in bringing back Garrett Bradbury, but only at a certain price point. Interest in bringing back Patrick Peterson that I can see happening. Interest in bringing back Duke Shelley, but only at a certain price point. You know, these Dalvin Tomlinson negotiations continue. I mean, Phil, you say that, you know, outside of Kirk, Daniil is the toughest situation. I would debate that the Dalvin Tomlinson situation is right up there. I get it. You know, fine. Hunter is. 1B or 2, but to me, Tomlinson falls in right underneath that. Like, can you really quantify the difference maker that he is? And he's chasing some big-time money. So I don't know if they can come to an agreement there, but the Vikings would love Dalvin Tomlinson back. He has interest in coming back, but also realizes the true time to really hit the big jackpot is now. And so, you know, I mean, they push back that void date. You know, those talks have been ongoing, but clearly as we sit here on the morning of March 9th, they really haven't made a whole lot of progress. So that's another one, right? So there's just, there's so much as you go up and down the list of stuff to chase, you know, where do things stand on the TJ Hawkinson extension? Where do things stand on the Justin Jefferson extension? The Vikings want to get both of those done before the start of next season. I can tell you that they want both those done. The longer you wait on Jefferson, the higher the price goes. So that is one they want to get done sooner rather than later. So there is so much for them to figure out that it's an ongoing process. It really is. But I do anticipate Friday, tomorrow, you know, I do anticipate some sort of news as early as tomorrow. All right, I'm going to ask you to swap your reporter hat for your your pure speculation hat here. Reckless do you speculate? Because you know, part of the conundrum here is, you know, the Vikings are in this sort of competitive rebuild, and in, in and they're competing. They won 13 games, but in order to do a better job rebuilding and getting younger, and and looking out on the three to five year horizon, they need more draft capital. They have they're going to have with it sounds like they're going to get a fifth round comp pick, so they're going to have five picks, but they have one pick in the first 86, and that's their first round pick. Do any of these players that are in question? So Adam Thielen. Dalvin Cook, Zadarius Smith had top five pressures in the league despite kind of disappearing with that bruised knee. Do any of these guys that are potentially on the Vikings chopping block get you draft picks back in the next few weeks? Well, I mean, I don't know if it's plural, but I did hear, thank you for bringing this up. I did hear that there is an offer in on Dalvin Cook. Oh. So if they wanted to trade Dalvin Cook, there is an interested team. I mean, you look at the running back market, right? I mean, they're not a whole lot there, depending on what you think of Miles Sanders. I there's, guess. A B, there's a lot of B-level guys out there. There's not a whole lot there. there. I mean, David Montgomery is okay. You know, Alexander Madison, okay. It's a lot of Jeff Wilsons and, you know, Damian Harris's, right? It's it's a lot of – and Alex Madison's. It's those I mean, types of guys. there's quantity. We can debate how much quality there is after the Raiders make their move on Jacobs, the Cowboys make their move on Pollard. The Giants make their move on Saquon. So you look at some of these teams that are chasing a running back, like Atlanta. I mean, that's one team with a lot of cap space that is interested in acquiring some running back. I can't tell you for sure it's Dalvin, but that certainly is one team. I know Denver's in the market for a running back, but not. I don't sense it's Dalvin. Maybe more so Madison, actually. Buffalo and Miami have, have sort of popped up in the – I mean – Buffalo's run game is a disaster. Uh, his brother plays for the Bills. And Miami, Miami 
I think I don't think Miami has any veteran running backs under contract. I'd have to go see. So well, I'll give you another one I heard too. Just some scuttlebutt from Indianapolis last week was Jacksonville. Now mm. Etienne is good out of the backfield, but that Jacksonville is in the market for a running back, right? So I mean, there are teams out there, and, and I I don't know the pick, Phil. I don't know if it's a seventh round pick, a fifth round pick. I don't know, but I heard that there has been an offer made. On Dalvin Cook, and I don't even know if the Vikings are willing to say, "Okay, yeah, let's do that." I just know that there is trade interest in Dalvin Cook. Interesting. All right, reckless speculation Thursday, Darren. It's time for elephant in the room conversation. Reckless speculation. It's time to talk about the biggest of the big in Egan, the quarterback, Kirk Cousins. All right. So, so the Vikings had, especially Quasi, some very interesting things to say at the combine about the position itself and about where things are trending, and Quasi, I think, told the assembled local press in Indianapolis that the Vikings would like to maintain flexibility there. So that in itself, put away, was intriguing. This week, I think, it's been ratcheted up, though, because if the Vikings took some control last week, the Cousins camp has some control this week because when we see what Daniel Jones has been paid, when we see what Carr has been paid, there's no skirting around the fact that... um, that Kirk Cousins has a pretty good case that he should not only be extended, but be extended at a pretty penny. He's going to want fully guaranteed money. Um, Between what you know and your ability to speculate as well, combining those, what does this week's events, uh, where does that lead you to think this thing could be trending, including allowing Kirk just to play the contract out and saying, you know what, guys? Let's revisit it next or after next season. Yeah, which is a distinct possibility. I mean, this week's events, certainly noteworthy. Don't know, Judd, though, that it changes the Vikings' mindset all that much. Mm -hmm. Now, I will tell you, somebody close to Kirk told me a few weeks ago, I've said this, that there was an anticipation that an extension is coming. This person has now gone silent with me the last few days. So read between those lines however you would like to. I've told you my gut, so if you want to go with the reckless speculation theme here, my gut for a while has been that they let this thing play out, that Quasi wants to maintain as much flexibility as humanly possible, that an extension doesn't take place this offseason. But I'll continue to monitor that situation. I'm not ruling out any possibility. I just not. I just haven't heard of actual steam that some sort of extension is like on the cusp of happening. So uh, I'll add to this. I don't. I don't know that this. Uh, you know, he didn't give a whole lot of substance when asked about this. But he was on Kirk. Kirk did a rare long form interview on the uh, Bussin' with the Boys podcast, Barstool. That just dropped this morning, and I was listening. It's like a forty five minute interview, and it's good. Like there was a couple entertaining parts where uh, they asked him about, you know sort of like the season winding down and they did ask him about the fourth and eight, but he said his biggest regret from the season aside from losing in the playoffs was not getting a grill. He was serious. He, his, he, <laughs> after the Kirko chains thing, he was legitimately going to go to a dentist and like get a grill. And so he said, you know, maybe next year um, he did say on the fourth and eight check down and they asked him a very pointed question. It was, and they're all, yeah, they, they had a friendly vibe, but they said, you know, Hey, You're a a 4,000-yard-a-year guy, the best ratios in the NFL, passer rating, but the perception of you is that when you need that one play, you're not up for it, and then the fourth and eight happens, you know, what happened there? And Kirk said, if I had, this is a direct quote from the podcast, if I had taken a sack instead, he said his options he thought were throw it to Hawkinson or take a sack. And a lot of other people, smart people, smarter than us, football players, the Jeremiah Searles, Alex Boones, the the Kurt Warners, everyone have said, no, there were two, a couple other options on that play. But in Kirk's mind, it was Sack or Hawkinson. And he said, quote, if I had taken a sack instead, the optics probably look better than the check down. He actually said his biggest regret was the play before that, where he, instead of leading K.J. Osborne on that third down throw, he threw it like a kind of a foot behind and the timing was off. And uh, he said if, if he could have one throw back, it would have been that throw. And he hinted that if the Vikings had continued forward on that drive after hitting the third down pass, that they would have gone for two to win the game. I don't know if that was just him kind of going back and saying, you know, what it, but he said that was a legit conversation. When he was asked about the future, 
what's you know what what does the future hold for Kirk Cousins? He referenced that uh, every offseason, him and his wife Julie, they huddle up, they talk, and Kirk said, "quote It does feel very year to year for us. Every year we ask, what are you going to do next?" And then he continued it and said, "For me, it's about winning. It's trying to win a Super Bowl, et cetera, et cetera." But um, interesting. I mean, he's thirty five, could probably play for another handful of years, and for him, it's you know. With him and his wife, it's kind of a year to year proposition for are they going? Is he going to play? Is he going to sign a long term, short term deal? It's never been a long term deal, but that's kind of some of the stuff that came out of the Bussin' with the Boys podcast this morning. Definitely interesting. On the fourth and eight, I still think the play design didn't do him any favors, but he still needs to throw that ball up. On his future, that piggybacks on what he told a crowd of about three to four thousand people at a Spire Credit Union event a couple weekends ago that. My colleague, my dear friend, Joe Schmidt, emceed. Joe actually did the Q&A with Kirk. Kirk said, now he was self-deprecating. He was entertaining. The crowd loved him when he was talking about his personal life, his kids fighting at home. He came across as a legit human being, not a robot. So the crowd loved him. But on football, Phil, there was a lot of uncertainty the way it was described to me was he was unsettled. Yeah. He did reference a conversation with his wife, Julie, where she got a bit emotional thinking about all the changes that are coming. This was before the Eric Kendricks move, you know, with some more changes, you know, soon to come. But that she got she got a little emotional, right? And and he talked about just that uncertainty, right? And so he came across as unsettled. So I mean that just feeds into you know, if something was close on an extension, would he have come across as unsettled, right? If something was close on an extension, right. does he volunteer that information? Now, I don't know when that Barstool podcast was recorded, right? I mean, maybe it was a week yeah. and a half, two weeks ago. But I think it was I think saying, it was maybe around the combine, but yeah, I'm not right. totally I'm, sure. I'm just saying, I mean, if something was close, if he had an inkling that something was going to happen, does he really volunteer those thoughts? I don't think so. Yeah. So that would feed into the notion that, you know, the Vikings are looking to play this thing out. And he and again, I, I this it was I, I recommend the audience. It's like 45 minutes. It's it's Kirk being Kirk. But it was there's some funny things in there. It's definitely worth a listen. It's an entertaining listen. You know, he didn't when asked about the future, he wasn't specific at all about the Vikings. He, he mentioned, you know, you, you try to keep the locker room together and build off what you did last year and whatever. But um, I think he kept it vague on purpose because there are complicated conversations happening right now. I think if you hit, if you had betting odds right now, Kirk being the Vikings quarterback in 2023 would be the minus 500, right? And then any other option would be, it would be the odds on favorite. Well, but, I mean, the question to ask is, what are the odds that Kirk Cousins is the Vikings quarterback in 2024? Yep. What would and you put those that's odds That's what at? they don't want to commit to, which is smart. It, it, look, I mean, these guys aren't dumb. At some point in time, you have to hit a reset button. That's that that goes be beyond you know trying to cut Thielen. So I think what he is, I I think it bothers Kirk because if you think about Kirk's OCD and personality, I think certainty is huge for Kirk. Like knowing what's going, what's coming next. Like the Washington to the Vikings thing was huge in his life. That was a huge thing. So I I think his unsettledness makes perfect sense because the Vikings are probably trying to make a smart business decision here, which is to, un unless you think that you have to play with the cap hit, which by the way is going to cost you again down the road, um, unless you are going to do that, it makes way more sense to just say, let's table it and let's see. And you know what? If you win a Super Bowl for us, you're coming back. And if we go out in the first round again, you're not. So like I could see the business, it, and it's going to sound weird because Kirk's done such a good job in his negotiations, Dukes. But I could see the business of football really bothering him and his family because he's always, I, I mean, his entire time here, starting in 2018, he has flat out dictated the terms of his employment to his employer. That needs to change, and I think it's going to change. That's what well, we're I think, seeing. Yeah, we're seeing it right now, Judd. It is changing right now. He can still hit a big monster payday, but sure. it'll be elsewhere. It won't be here. Let's not forget, too, that, yes, the cap is going up, 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 but imagine the Christian Derrissaw extension right. in a couple years. What will the TJ Hawkinson extension look like? Certainly the Jefferson extension, you know, with 
his camp's aim to make him the highest paid non quarterback. Mm -hmm. That means more than what the Niners will eventually give to Nick Bosa. All right. So the Vikings need to be planning for those extensions. You can't be paying a quarterback 45 to 48, whatever the number is north of 38 million. Right. So, I mean, we're starting to see that unfold right now. So, I mean, until I hear otherwise, I just don't get the sense that, that an extension is like, like, you know, on the cusp of happening. I, I just, I don't have that sense at all. Yeah. All right. We're going to, we're going to empty the scoop bag here in a second, but Dex, tell the audience, I, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Tony Finau just had a, Oh yeah. Just dunked one in the water on the uh, Island green down 17, whether you're into the players this weekend or uh, the winter sports underdog fantasy makes sports watching a lot more fun. I saw Rory with a double to kick off the day. Not a great day. So I, I'm riding this for the afternoon, Phil. I got uh, Fitzpatrick. I got the gala. I got Jason Day. I got mm. lower scores here at one of the tougher places to play at the Players' Championship. With underdog fantasy, the best way to get a sweat on all the games. And maybe you take some Anthony Edwards props, right? I mean, the dude's been dropping 30 points like crazy. There's plenty of wild props, Wolves props, PGA props. Uh, when you join underdog fantasy, the promo code SCORE, S-K-O-R, they'll match your first deposit up to $100. Go download the Underdog Fantasy app. Awesome. All right, Dukes, it's what else do you have there? Hey, Declan, so I'm anchoring on Sunday night. I'm doing TV on Channel 5 on Sunday night. One of my colleagues, I'll leave his name out of it, but he had a prop bet on Jaron Jackson Jr. of the Memphis Grizzlies. Oh, boy. Over three and a half free throws made. He's not oh, a boy. great free throw shooter. He gets to the line, but, you know, he's like – what, 55, 60, 65 percent? He's not like 75 to 85 percent. But guess what? Within the first seven minutes of that game, Jaron Jackson got to the free throw line four times, made all four hey of his free throws. He hit the over seven <laughs> minutes into the game. You should have seen the just the 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 look of joy, the celebratory. Chris Long was of, pleased, huh, Dukes? Welcome, Chris. No, no. Chris was at Springsteen on Sunday. That's why I was working. Schmidt was in St. George of Utah, <laughs> tough life. I think right? I know who you're talking uh, about. Is this person's Long last name rhyme with Pronicle? <laughs> Doesn't matter who it is, but I'm just telling you, it was, it was fantastic to see to see him ride that roller coaster, but Jaron makes the four free throws. But you know, the, like those prop bets, those are those are so much fun. I mean, you know, you're not you're not like wagering your house or anything crazy like that, right? Well, you know, well, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm responsible on underdog I, kids. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, on a flight. To, I'm on a flight to Vegas in 14 hours, so responsibility is going completely out the window. Most <laughs> right, likely. Well, we'll I hope with I the weather, Declan, with. you can get out. So, yeah. you know, I'm rooting for you to get out. But yeah, in Vegas, yeah, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I get all that, right? Vegas is a different animal. But some of these, you know, minor prop bets, you know, in theory, minor prop bets. Uh, you know, it just it makes watching a game that much more entertaining. Yes, yes, it does. What else is in your uh, bag of scoops here, dude? Before we say goodbye. Well, I'll do a bonus scoop session tomorrow, Friday, with you guys. So I can yeah, save do that a wolves nugget. Ju well, ju he's okay. got a juicy wolves nugget right. for tomorrow on scoops. Well, yeah. you know, uh, also on the wolves, Jalen Noel underwent an MRI on his knee. The knee is still sore. Test came back negative. I, I don't know if this has been reported or not, so I apologize if if the MRI note has been out there, but. It's a short-term injury. Don't know if he'll be back as soon as tomorrow against the Nets. Carl Anthony Towns waiting to hear. We'll be over there later today. But he did participate in, in some live action on Wednesday. He's been doing on-the-court work for a while, but not with anybody you know offering any sort of resistance. There was a little resistance offered on Wednesday. So that's the next step, trying to get Carl Anthony Towns back in the, in the Wolves lineup. The Wolves are busy scouting all these – all these conference tournaments. I was at the Summit League semifinals in Sioux Falls on Monday. Mm. I know the Wolves had some representation there. So did the Indiana Pacers. This kid, Grant Nelson from North Dakota State, 6'11 forward, is legit. This kid from Oral Roberts, Max Asmus, he's legit too, undersized as a guard. But those two guys are legit NBA prospects. So I know the Wolves were in Sioux Falls as well. They're at all these big conference tournaments this week. Love it. Darren Doogie Wolfson. One more. Just for tradition, Byron Buxton, Jorge Polanco, I've had people ask me, what's going on? Like, can these guys get in some of these exhibition games? This is all part of the plan. It is a ramp up. It's in thirds. I've mentioned it with Buxton, but sort of the same plan applies to Jorge Polanco. It goes in thirds. So as we get closer to March 30th opening day, you'll see these guys in game action. But they're getting plenty of work behind the scenes, off to the side. 
There is no reason to be worried about Jorge Polanco and Byron Buxton at this point. What about Kirilov? Well, yeah, maybe a little bit more concern there. Yeah, I'm not ready to volunteer that that he's good to go for, for March Uh-oh. 30th. That's why they signed Donovan Solano. I mean, I'm just telling mm-hmm. you that. Donnie Barrels. I mean, you know, some people thought, well, is that an insurance happy. policy for Polanco at second base? No. That's no. an insurance policy for Kirilov at first base. So oh, Maybe Kirilov, Kirilov is an insurance policy for Donnie yeah. Barrels. Well, yeah, maybe. But I'm just telling you, on, on Polanco and Buxton, those guys are progressing as planned. Kirilov, that's another question. But, yeah, Polanco and Buxton, I wouldn't worry about those guys right now. Mm. Thanks, Dukes. Great okay, sesh. See ya. Great sesh. All right, Dukes, a little bonus scoops tomorrow with an interesting Wolves nugget. So uh, be back for that one. Reckless speculation. Great stuff. We're going to have on Purple Daily today. So two weeks ago, Dex, you were gone. Uh, you were in North Carolina the last time we had a snowstorm. You just seemed to right, have so impeccable no, timing no, getting out of town. But we did a Purple Daily <laughs> episode where Judd and I and then uh, AJ was also in the room uh, as part of our scouting staff. We just went through, we played GM and went through the entire Vikings offseason, did, did the internal decisions. We, we literally like put names on paper for external free agents, and we did a mock draft simulation. Back by popular demand. You guys said, wow, you, sh- you guys should do this all the time, at least weekly. We're going to do it again today, Thursday, on Purple Daily and see where we wind up at the end of the, the offseason with us as the general managers. And Judd has already texted us early this morning. I'm not yeah. going to say what yeah. it is. Very early. But he said. From the Target parking lot. Yeah, from from, from the target As I was going food. to get some paper towels and dog food. <laughs> he said, this is a big move that I want to make. Yep. Well, I want to yeah. make this big move and build the, the offseason around yep. this big move. My okay. popular request, too. Wow. All I'm going to say. So uh, we'll do that. Uh, Mackie and Judd, this has been a scoop session. Inside information about your favorite Minnesota sports teams with Darren Doogie Wilson. See you guys.